uh, I'm going to start now. So good afternoon and a very, very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us here. This is the year in which we are going in for our PYP evaluation and we are an IB continuum school. So we thought that we would spend a little time and talk to all of you about what is the true meaning of an IB education. There are reasons why you may have chosen an IB school, but for all intents and purposes, what does it mean to be IB educated? So welcome to this afternoon's session. And we are hoping that it will be a little interactive. So there are four objectives that Ms. Busha and I have for this session and the objectives start inside out. So we'd really like you to begin with the uh, inside of the circle that is learning to unlearn. We come with so many preconceived notions about what we believe in, what school should be like, what education is like, but we need to unlearn some of these. After we learn to unlearn, we know that what we know is a perspective. So therefore, if we are able to listen, then we hear other viewpoints and other perspectives as well. Once we listen to other viewpoints, we can be open-minded and understand what this means to be an IB learner. And finally, how do we apply this in our own setup? And how do we reach out to others? So this is really our objectives for today. Rather than having very linear objectives, we thought that this would be circular because this is really what an IB education is. It always goes in an inquiry-based circular fashion. So with this, I welcome all of you. And now I'd like you to very quickly, in your own words, write down your definition of education. And please put this on the chat. And as you put it up for everyone to see, I will read out some of what your understanding of education is. So I'll wait for the chat to fill up. Okay, so an education is a well-rounded learning experience. Fantastic. That is what we would expect an IB education to be. And we hope everybody has that. So an education is a learning experience. Waiting for some other definitions. You can have some contrary definitions as well. Holistic development, looking after the academic, social, and emotional. Yeah, holistic makes the child fit for life, mind, and body, ready, curious, and challenges them, not rote learning. Yeah, learning by concepts, academic development, making one a good human being, imparting knowledge that is useful and practical, an experience of overall well being, fantastic responses process to facilitate knowledge, skills, values, and beliefs, to have developed all senses, all good human beings, uh, learning in an environment that allows you to ask questions and tap into your strengths and work on your weaknesses, becoming future ready, uh, conditioning one's mind, critical thinking, ongoing process, what lovely responses. Um, on learnability, conceptual learning, preparing our children, identifying strengths, learning life skills. Oh my gosh, we really have a fantastic group of IB parents and that's a terrific definition of what education is and what we hope it should be and what we aspire for all our children. So thank you for sharing that and that was really wonderful. So moving on, let's look at what the IB continuum provides us. And when we talk about IB, there are actually four programs and it's called the IB continuum and we are what is known as an IB continuum school. 
each of these has a program model. Each of these is defined by a color. There's a lot of similarity across, and there are also some differences which are developmentally appropriate. So you have the yellow, which is PYP, the red, which is MYP, the blue, which is the diploma program. There is also a fourth ID program called the ID Career Related Certificate, which is a program which needs to link up with the vocational institute and it hasn't taken on very uh, well in India. There are certain parts of the world where it is. So for all practical purposes, we as a school call ourselves an IB Continuum School because we offer PYP from early years to grade five, MYP from grade six to 10, and the DP from grades 11 to 12. And we don't have the CP. So having said all of that, let's look at what each program model is about. Now in the heart of every program model, there is the learner. And that is where we begin. We start with the center because the IB believes that the learner is the focus of what we do. With the learner in the center, we have very, very specific and clear guidelines on what teaching and learning in the IB looks like. And that is the second part of the circle. And this teaching and learning is based on inquiry. We want the students to ask questions. We want them to be curious and lifelong learners. We also want them to take action, namely do something about what they're inquiring. And finally, we are all reflective and we can only be better human beings and better versions of ourselves if we continuously reflect on what we are doing. The third part of the circle, starting with the learner and then the teaching and learning, talks about multilingualism and intercultural understanding right at the bottom of the circle, which is why we have language. And the IB is one of the very, very few boards of education that does not talk about language learning, but language acquisition because what they believe is that language is linked intrinsically to culture. And unless you understand the culture, you're never able to embody the language learning. So we have multilingualism, which we promote, and global engagement, because we now can see that the world is becoming a smaller and smaller space. And on top of the circle is something called global context, where the IB believes that we act locally, but we think globally. And thinking globally doesn't always mean thinking of other countries, but thinking with a wider perspective. For example, just listening to Michelle Obama at the Democratic National Convention last night, one can see so many commonalities not just with what she's saying to her, electoral, uh, um, you know, to her electorate, but what we can learn from that. So that is being global, where we are able to make connections across and realize that the IB is all about promoting intercultural understanding. And finally, the IB programs are broad and balanced, conceptual and connected and they offer a curriculum. So I can see all of you and we all need to give ourselves a pat on the shoulder that as IB parents, we are very much in sync with what this means. This is the commonality that goes across all the four IB programs in our school, the PYP, the MYP and the DP represented by the yellow, the red and the blue circles. So now let's look at some facts about the IB in India. Did anybody know this? That the IB was first taught in 1976. And the very first IB school in the country is the Kodai Kanal International School in the South. And for me, my first introduction to the IB was through one of the kids whom I taught who said she wanted to go to Coimbatore because she wanted an IB education. So we don't realize that there has been IB in this country for a long, long time, 44 years, more than what we may have realized. There are 175 IB World Schools in India, which offer one or more of the four IB programs. 
and you have 98 PYP schools, 43 MYP schools, and 138 DP schools. We often ask ourselves a question as school administrators, should we start an IV school from the diploma side, namely from the high school and then build down? Or do we start from the PYP and build up? There's no correct answer. In Mount Littera, we've started with the PYP, then the MYP, and since last year, we have the DP program in place. There are 274 universities that recognize the IB and they have official policies for admitting IB students to their courses. I'm not just talking about foreign universities who like having IB students because they bring a different perspective. But even now in India, our university education and with the coming in of liberal arts universities like Ashoka and Kriya and Flames, there are so many options that our students have to remain in India. So any of the misconceptions that your friends may have or you may think about that if you do the IB, you have to go abroad, let's dispel with all those myths because you can very well stay in India. And the IB education is not just about getting that degree, but about transforming the way you think or the way students think and therefore it is learning for life. And very often as IB teachers, we say, we're not only about the assessment, it's about the learning. So coming home from the statistics, this is our mission statement, which is right there on the foyer, it's on every floor. And this mission statement was written probably by our very first principal, who I happened to know, Mr. Hugh Pullen, who was actually the principal of Seven Oaks in England. And for a little, and he set up the Dhirubhai Ambani School. And he is one of the first people to have set up Mount Littera right in the very, very early years. I think before the building was even formed. For those of you who know Ruchika Sachke, at that time it was Hugh Pullen and Ruchika who were looking after developing this mission statement at Mount Littera. And he, Mr. Pullen, being a very seasoned IB educator, has brought in all the elements of what would be a good IB education. So look at the key words in our mission statement. A happy and secure environment for learning and social development. So while we aspire to the best of teaching and learning, we are also very practical so that our students achieve high academic standards. And yet we want them to be world citizens. We want them to have a love of learning, building characters, very, very important. Confidence is what every MLSI student has because we want them to be confident as they move into the future and be sensitive to the needs of others regardless of class, creed, and culture. It was so wonderful that on this Saturday, grade seven celebrated our Independence Day with another school where they would have ordinarily visited, but instead they did it on Zoom. And we have our older kids who conducted a model United Nations across the city and for students across the country. So as a school, we firmly believe that our mission statement needs to make our students sensitive to others and we are all responsible for them and for reaching out to them. If I now have to look at the IB mission statement, it's very much aligned with the MLSI mission statement because the first sentence in this statement is that we want to develop inquiring, knowledgeable and caring young people who help to create a better and more peaceful world through intercultural understanding and respect. And a better and more peaceful world for our city, a better and more peaceful world for our state, for our country, and eventually globally. And so the IB provides a framework and they work with schools, governments, and international organization in order to help us develop challenging programs. So we receive a framework from the IB and then we work with our curriculum and see how that works. And yes, 
Since we want a better and more peaceful world, we want students to become active, compassionate and lifelong learners who understand that other people with their differences can also be right. So important today where we are fraught with so much conflict and we just need to understand that for a better world, we need to accept and live along with each other. So we would really like you to understand that as a school, we are very much aligned to the IB mission statement with our mission statement as well. Coming to the PYP, if we look at the PYP model, it's very similar to the other program models, but with all the elements that make it PYP. So while we begin with the learner in the center, and the teaching and learning is at the heart of the program, the next circle, that is the third circle, talks about agency. Namely, we want students to take responsibility for what they do and their action. And then after grade five, it culminates with an exhibition. So these are the ways in which students are able to express the approaches to learning that they have undergone. With this, we have the different subject groups or the focus areas in which we have language, social studies, math, the arts, science, and PSP or physical, social, and personal education. And then we have the transdisciplinary themes, which are the six themes. So you see everything begins from the center. We start with the learner. The learner is the one who does the inquiry and the agency with the subject groups and then the transdisciplinary theme. And finally, we want everybody to become global citizens. So we want to develop what is called international mindedness. So very different for most of us who went to school because our entire approach in school was with that subject and that exam. Whereas here, the focus is the learner and the understanding and what the learner can bring to the table. So this is the PYP model. What we're going to do right now is we're going to see a very short film, which the IB has created, after which I'm going to give you some questions and an activity, and we're going to go into smaller breakout rooms, which I will explain, and we will have some sharing and some interaction. So I'm going to play this film right now, which I'd like you all to have a look at. For over 40 years, an international baccalaureate education has been helping people cross the boundaries that separate languages, countries, and cultures. Today, Sorry. Today, the IB continues that tradition, providing a continuum of international education that features four high-quality programs for students from 3 to 19 years old. In a rapidly changing world, IB programs aim to develop intercultural understanding and respect, a mission reflected in 10 core values. The IB Learner Profile describes the attributes of people who are empowered to help create a better and more peaceful world. As IB Learners, we strive to be inquirers, curious, enthusiastic, lifelong learners who ask powerful questions, knowledgeable, exploring locally and globally significant ideas, thinkers, critical, creative, ethical decision makers, Communicators, good listeners, confident in more than one language. Principled, honest, fair, and responsible. Open-minded, developing critical appreciation for our own cultures and the cultures of others. Caring, committed to service with the community. Risk-takers, courageous, resourceful, and resilient. Balanced focused on well-being for ourselves and those around us, reflective, thoughtful, realistic, and hopeful for the future. 
At the heart of an IB education are passionate, lifelong learners who believe that how you learn and why you're learning is as important as what you study in school. Students are at the center of IB programs, internationally minded people who recognize their common humanity and shared guardianship of the planet. An IB education means opportunities to develop healthy relationships, imagination, and ethical reasoning. It means building the confidence and persistence students need to achieve challenging goals. It means learning what it is to be human and how to thrive in a complex world. IB learners work together to turn experience into understanding. As they learn how to learn and how to manage their own learning, IB students are supported by assessment, a variety of strategies through which teachers help them understand how they're doing and how they can keep doing better. An IB education helps students build understanding through inquiry, action, and reflection. Students learn by doing, connecting the classroom with the world beyond. IB programs culminate in exhibitions, projects, and independent research that demonstrate not only what students know, but also what they can do. An IB education creates learning communities in which students can increase their understanding of language and culture and which can help them to become more globally engaged. Through IB programs, students explore how to face both local and global challenges that involve the environment, development, conflict, rights, cooperation, and governance. The IB's courses and curriculum frameworks are engaging, relevant, challenging, and significant. In IB programs, students learn content that is worth knowing and that can help them make a difference. An IB education spans traditional academic disciplines and pushes students to make connections across many fields of study. IB programs are broad and balanced, conceptual and connected. Their rigorous models of assessment have earned widespread respect, including recognition of the IB diploma as an international university entrance qualification. The IB represents an independent worldwide community of educators who are committed to excellence. Thousands of creative IB world schools collaborate to connect high ideals with the day-to-day -day details of teaching and learning. They hold each other mutually accountable to standards and practices that define high quality educational programs. What makes an IB education unique? Alumni, educators, supporters, and more than a million students and their families every year working together to make a better world through education. So that was a short film on what an IB education is. And the heart of an IB education is the learner profile. So what I'm going to do is I'm very quickly going to run through all the 10 attributes of the learner profile, after which we'll go into smaller groups where you can have a discussion. So the learner profile are the 10 attributes that all students develop throughout the continuum of learning that is the IB. There is a booklet which provides us a tool for whole school reflection and analysis. And we need to ask ourselves a question, to what extent do our philosophy, our school structures and systems enable students and adults to develop into the learner described in the profile? It's not enough that we just tell our students that they need to express the learner profile. Teachers and parents need to bring this profile into the classrooms and homes as well. So what are these 10? In order to be educated, I need to be a good thinker because then I apply thinking skills creatively and critically to recognize and approach not only complex problems, but after approaching them, how would I make a reasoned ethical decision? Yes, it's very important to be caring, to show empathy and compassion and respect towards the needs and feelings of others and to have a commitment to service and act to make a positive difference to the lives of others and to the environment. 
I need to be knowledgeable because it's not enough to just be a thinker and caring. I need to explore concepts, ideas, and issues that are both local and global and acquire in-depth knowledge so that I have a broad understanding across a range of disciplines. Then I need to be reflective so that I'm constantly thinking about my own thinking, thinking about my learning. And then I'm able to assess and understand my strengths and limitations in order that I can support my own learning. Yes, I need to be principled because unless I act with integrity and honesty and a sense of fairness, justice and respect, how can I expect to build a better world? I have to take responsibility for my actions and know the consequences that accompany them. And here we need parents to support students in being principled in their work and in their lives. Yes, I need to be balanced because not only is schoolwork important, but also I need to have physical well being, social, emotional, and mental well being, not only for myself, but for others. I need to be a good communicator because as an IB student or as an IB educator, I'm constantly going out in the world and communicating. So I need to be able to express my ideas confidently and creatively. And because it is global, we communicate in more than one language and across a wide variety of modes of communication. We collaborate across the world and that's why it's important to be a communicator. If I'm collaborating across the world, I need to be open-minded because remember our first objective, learn to unlearn. There are other cultures and histories. There are different perspectives, values, and traditions. And therefore, I seek and evaluate a range of points of view, and I must be willing to grow from experience. I need to be an inquirer because I can only enjoy my learning if I'm curious and acquire the skills so that I'm independent in learning. And I have this love for learning throughout my life. Finally, I need to be a risk taker. There was a lot of debate in the IB and among many of us educators. Is risk taker a good word? Should we change it to courageous? But courageous doesn't pick up the essence of a risk taker. If you're a risk taker, you move out and you want to go forward into the world and you want to do something that where you have the courage to approach an uncertain situation and yet you have an independent spirit. So we've continued with having risk takers. So these are the 10 learner profiles. I would request you to kindly take a screenshot of this. And I'm also going to try and post on the chat a copy of this learner profile. I hope that you're able to get it because the last time there were some parents who said they were not able to get it. So I'm going to try and see if I can put it up onto the chat. I have put in a PDF document and it's uploading. You will have to click it once it uploads so that you have a copy of the learner profile. And if you have taken a screenshot of this, what we would like to do now as the learner profile is uploading is look at how you would practice the learner profile in your home. So in order to do this, I'm going to create what are called breakout rooms and we have um, I'm going to make six rooms so that we have roughly five to six parents in each room. And the task that you have is to look at this learner profile either from the screenshot or by downloading the PDF, which will soon be up on chat. And talk about how you can express and bring the learner profile alive in your own homes. So, so what will happen now is if you look on the chat, you will see something called LP for parents, which is a PDF file. If you download it, you will have a copy of the learner profile. 
And once I make the breakout rooms, you will get a message on your screen saying join breakout room. You just have to click join and you will find yourself in another space with four to five other parents. Take this opportunity to talk about the task, engage with each other. And then after about 10 or 15 minutes, we will come back and we will share some ideas as to how we can uh, bring the learner profile into our homes. So I hope everybody is ready to move into breakout rooms. If there are any questions, you can unmute. Otherwise, I have opened all the rooms. So please join the room as it comes into your uh, screen. And once you join the room, please have a conversation about how the learner profile can come into your home. So uh, what I'm going to do is, no. yeah, just ask any one group to unmute and, and share any thoughts or ideas or what you thought about this whole activity. Did you enjoy meeting different people or just um, any group? We can either go group wise or just unmute and, and share so that we can all have an opportunity to hear each one speak. So I leave the floor open. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, Resham, go ahead. Okay. okay, so it was really interesting. We were a group of four moms and uh, we realized that during this time, uh, we've seen a lot of changes with our kids. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not only open-minded and, uh, you know, I think they've learned a lot of, I, I don't know in what bracket that would come, but I think they've become very independent in terms of, learners they they're very self-reliant and that has been a big change you know they we, they don't need us to hover around and uh, and i think for as parents that's risk takers because we've actually let them be not knowing what's going on and they've done very well for themselves in fact they they're very uh, they become more um um i think the word is responsible and uh, it's it's a it's a very good feeling you know you let them be and they prove to be very very responsible and I also, we also spoke about um, the kids being the, the, you know, getting a sense of empathy because of the times. You know, they're very abreast with what's happening, current affairs, news. They want to know when the next vaccine is going to be out. What is the situation? And for kids to be homebound for so many months, I think they've been troopers. They've been real troopers. And I think a lot of the attributes come into that, fall into that aspect and very impressive. And I think we all feel that way. That's, so, yeah, yeah that, that is so, so lovely to hear. And what would be wonderful for your kids is if you are able to use the same vocabulary because they all know the learner profile vocabulary. So if moms are starting to use the same thing. So if you have, if you tell your kids, you know, be a risk taker or be more open-minded, I think it would be great for them. And it will be lovely if this vocabulary comes into your homes as well. So thank you for sharing, Resham. Uh, would another group like to unmute and share? If it were your kids, they'd all be jumping to unmute and the parents are like hesitating. So go ahead, be risk takers like your kids. Yeah. Uh, hi, ma'am. Uh, we were a group of uh, three. Yeah. Uh, Urja and uh, Natasha with us. So uh, overall, we thought, I mean, we are using all 10 profiles at home at the current situation. I mean... Some days they are risk takers, some days they are inquirers, some days they are very caring. So all kinds of uh, profiles they have been using at home and we all have been trying to uh, be like uh, them. Uh, for us, it has been uh, like uh, a few we have uh, really uh, came forward with. One was caring. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, uh, we have to create an environment wherein uh, they care about their uh, family their friends, uh, the environment, the nature, they have, they show compassion about the environment, uh, what is happening in and around. So uh, they have to be aware of that and be uh, empathizing towards everyone and everything around them. So we thought uh, caring is one profile, which uh, really uh, is in need at this current situation. Uh, we also thought about open-mindedness, so it's uh, accepting uh, people and things as they are and what they are. 
and uh, I like you. being uh, more uh, 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 i mean um, being more open to i new ideas and taking them in taking all kinds of knowledge and everything and whatever is useful for you and your uh, surroundings you can obviously use them so being open mindedness being caring uh, then the third one we uh, thought about was uh, being well balanced so you have to be uh, physically mentally emotionally and socially uh, fit and uh, balanced to uh, have a um, like say suppose if you are like um, uh, if say one it's like four wheels of a car yeah, so absolutely. if if it's like so if it's like one wheel is not uh, working so the other three takes on and you know try to work the car out so it's like you have to have a very balanced um approach so that was one we thought well balanced uh, then we thought uh, about um uh, inquirers i mean you have to uh, if they are if the kids are inquiring if they want to know what is happening you have to tell them what the facts are and how they are and they uh they should be knowing what is happening uh, in the environment and in their surroundings and what is happening with them so if they are inquiring if they are asking you if they are curious you have to um, answer them you have to give them the resources you have to tell them the facts and you have to tell them the truth so one was that and um, uh, the next no, one we uh, no you don't uh, have dealt... to go through all, through all of them no we didn't we just we do five five of them Yeah. So yeah. yeah, and one was I mean, uh, integrity, a principle basically. Yeah. So you need to you need to have certain rules and follow certain disciplines and uh, follow them. So and be in uh, I mean honest and tell them be to be honest and not to lie and stuff like that. So absolutely. Yeah. So these are the few few things which we uh, spoke about. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a lot of. Uh, detail what would also be nice is that when you are reading bedtime stories or looking at uh, a television show or something look at how the learner profile comes alive we really the aim of this is to make it come live and not just be laminated because we all know that we ought to be like this but are we like this at all uh, times in our lives uh, would any yeah. other group like to share so sure, i i would like to go ahead uh, we were a very interesting group of mothers three mm-hmm. of us and uh, it what was really nice is that all of us had children of different age groups mm-hmm. so there was a one who had uh, the child in the first grade and the fourth grade then i have twins both in the eighth and one had uh, even an ib uh, diploma child so that's 11th so we had a lot of exchanging notes on parenting and how we are actually using this profile to manage our children and how uh, we use things like uh, inquiring even principled communicator and risk taker to resolve conflicts and fights between the kids and how we use a uh, thinker and knowledgeable even f- put the question back to them and how uh, uh, we make small uh, discuss things in the kitchen and relate them to science and how uh, we are actually helping them to be reflective to think of different perspectives so we discuss more on how more in the parent thing act we are actually using ib profile to better parents so that was really nice and what we also uh, realized that ib is made our children very very independent and how they are actually add another fresh perspective to something that we are looking at Yeah. especially the older ones like even with the my eighth graders we if we read an article uh, say the editorial of the newspaper and when we discuss it as a family i love the different perspectives that even an eighth grader can give on an editorial which is not easy and how they can reason out and a lot goes on to the ib profile to say how they have actually made it a part of who they are so thank you to mlsi for that yeah Thank you so much for uh, sharing that because you brought up a very interesting aspect. When we think of this learner profile, it's not just about the children. It is something that yeah. it needs to be there across everybody. Teachers, yeah. Need yeah. To be there. yeah, parents, the management, government. If we all had these ten attributes, we would certainly have a much better world. So thank you for bringing that in. And yes. 
the IB makes people um, more confident and able to express. So I'm sure your kids have absolutely uh, no uh, inhibitions in giving you their thoughts and their ideas of what they think the editorial is all about. So thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, would we have a, another five minutes so we can have sharing from another group? If you'd like to add on, please unmute. From group one, would Mr. you like Sirvai? to share? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just sharing. Uh, Mr. Sirvai, we did discuss and uh, we understood everyone's perspective about IB learners. Uh, one thing which we all wanted to um, know is that how we could inculcate most of these IB learner profiles from our home front. I really wanted to understand uh, how we could collaborate from the home front to uh, help them build all these IB profiles. So, as I'm saying, A, we need to model it. I mean, are we principled in our own actions uh, when we break a, I mean, not now, of course, but in the past, when the light is turning from, you know, green to red, are we, do we, are we principled enough to stop? Do we take a wrong turn on the road? Uh, as adults, are we thinkers before we do something? Are we inquirers? Do we make ourselves more knowledgeable? So one way would be modeling this. Another way would be uh, looking at examples around us. So one of my diploma program kids in grade 12 actually exemplified the learner profile through people whom she thought were her heroes. So the which hero exemplified which learner profile and she did some artwork on that particular person or in stories or in films and so on. And that's how it really becomes a part of your vocabulary rather than something that is there in school and we do it only when we go to school but when we are home we have a different vocabulary i hope that helps Ms. busha do you want to add on some uh, activities or something no miss i think that's exactly what you said like you know the children learn best from uh, observing and they imitate you know everybody they see around that's the first thing of their learning process so if we model it ourselves that's the only thing we can say and then create opportunities because when parents also give a feedback like we were discussing that at the end of units when we ask parents to give a feedback you know what did they learn or what did they observe so the constant speaking of that same language at home you know promotes that particular engagement and that type of a profile or the you know the activity that a child does really promotes uh, and inculcates that uh, attribute in them. That's absolutely, yeah. that's what you said. Yeah, thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to uh, Yeah, speak? I can add to it. Yeah. Um, you know, we all have had now this great chance to spend so much time with our children. And our children really show us a mirror sometimes. So basically, they are a physical reflection of our mental state. So having open conversations with them, open-ended, not entrusting our conditioning to the, uh, you know, onto them, uh, gives them a chance to be, I feel, even better communicators. So they're not hesitant in expressing and being open. So I feel, um, yes, they will, you know, they go through the whole um, 10 profiles constantly, but I feel uh, open-mindedness and communication is it's key to even gather yeah, knowledge or you know be principled yeah so it is it is i think parents have an equal role yeah along with the school yeah absolutely and thank you i love the phrase that you have used that's why we're teachers because as teachers the children in our classroom are mirrors to us. They have no inhibition yes. about saying exactly what it is. And they are the ones who remind us constantly that we need to live this and model it and not just talk about it. Yeah. yeah so thank you for yeah. that phrase. I think if there's one takeaway that we can mirror what we want our children to be, I think this would have been a, an hour yeah. well spent together. Yeah. So, I have a question, um, Mr. Sarvai, quickly yeah. if I can. It's a little different from the IB, uh, uh, what we are doing right now. Uh, my question is that uh, I don't want to break the flow, but this is something in my mind and I was wondering, 
uh, the number of MYP programs in all of it always is decreased. So there are a lot of PYP and there's a lot of DP schools. MYP, a lot of people are going into IGCSC vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, the yeah. MYP program. Yeah. So what is the, re is there a reason for it or what are the pros in the MYP aspect? I'll be happy to do this, but uh, should we just say that we can stay back because I have the time. Yes. But just yes. for everybody else, I'm happy to stay back on the Zoom call. But I mean, just for everybody else, um, just want to wind up because everyone may not be interested in the same thing. I just hope yes. that we achieved our objectives. And that's why I came back to this slide. And I wanted to thank everybody for spending this one hour together. I think we have really gotten to know all of you parents <laughs> through this online uh, platform and um, thank you and we hope that we can continue to have you know more engagements online and offline and so on and so forth